What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Shep's Garage video and today I have a very special car here behind me that I am reviewing today. This is a 2007 Audi RS4 and today I'm going to be walking around this car showing you around it and mainly explaining why this car is an Audi icon. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video. First, if you're new to the channel, it's the first time seeing my face on your screen, don't forget to please click that subscribe button down below for more awesome car content like this. I also want to give a big shout out to my neighbor who let me, who lent me his RS4 to clean. It, I just finished cleaning it uh, and uh, I'm now filming a video with it. So thank you neighbor if you're watching this video. Uh, and uh, I also do a lot of Mark 8 GTI content, other car content, so if you came to the right place, if you want that type of car content, I'm trying to become a full-time YouTuber and I cannot do it without your guys' support. So here's how this video is going to work. I'm going to share a cool, couple of cool facts about the RS4, give you guys a little overview, then I'm going to walk around it, show some cool features about this car, and then I'm going to end off with why this car was discontinued and the RS4 will never, ever come back to the United States ever again. So. Let's start off with those cool facts, an overview. Now the RS4 was made here from 2006 to 2007, and it was a part of the B7 generation. Now, my dad owned a B7 Audi A4, so this car really, really brings me back to those days when I was around seven or eight years old, riding in the back seat of that car. And uh, there are a couple of different features about the RS4 that distinguish it from a normal A4 of that generation. First of all is the engine. Audi made this car specifically only with a 4.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 with over 420 horsepower. And I mean, just look at how beautiful this thing is. The carbon fiber, which uh, is yellow because the heat from the engine would yellow these, which is why uh, Audi now doesn't use actual carbon fiber on their engines. Fun fact. Uh, you also have the red on the outsides and obviously one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So. V8, over 420 horsepower, and Audi used these engines in the RS4, and as well as this car also derived the engine for the V8 R8 back in 2008 when that car came out. So these two, the R8 and the RS4 don't share the same engine, but they, the RS4 derived that engine for the R8. So fun fact there, just so you guys don't get confused between the V8 R8 engine and this uh, and this RS4 engine. Next is the body panels. Now, you know how now, currently now Audi makes an A5, an S5, and an RS5? Well, if you get an A5 Sportback and, an, and you compare that to an RS5 Sportback, the RS5 Sportback and the A5 Sportback share a lot of the same body panels and parts. Well, what if I told you that back then, this car was so special to Audi that Audi individually made every single body panel different? I'm serious front bumper is different, the hood is different, these uh, f uh, fenders are flared out. So you kind of see it from the side, they're flared out. These are different from a normal A4. Side skirts are different, doors are different, mirrors are different, The r even the roof angle is different from a normal A4. The, like I said, the rear fenders are different. These doors have RS4 badges in them. The wheels are different, the rear bumper is different. The uh, trunk lid is even different. You can kind of see that the trunk lid kind of flares out a little bit. Kind of have a little bit of a spoiler. Yep, this is different from a normal A4 of this generation. Uh, the lower diffuser part is different. The exhaust tips are different. And same thing on this other side. Every single panel in this car is different, which this shows how much this car actually mattered to Audi. It also goes for the interior of this car, but a lot of the stuff is also shared with an A4. So as you can see, you have this beautiful weaved carbon fiber trim, which you can actually see the weave in the carbon fiber compared to my mom's S5, which I'll show now the Audi Carbon looks like today, and honestly, it doesn't look nearly as good as the RS4. You can't see the weave up close, and it honestly looks pretty, uh, I don't want to call it cheap, but it also just doesn't look as natural as the old RS4 carbon fiber weave. Of course, you get unique RS4 style gauges and a top speed of 200 miles an hour on the speedometer, even though this car can only hit 155. Seats are also different from a normal A4. You can see they say RS4 in the back and they are much more aggressive looking with stitching and piping everywhere and lots of lots of cushion. And 
in the center here, we have a nice little infotainment screen. This was the first generation of Audi screens. Um, they were pretty good. I'll show it in a minute. And then we have, of course, a six-speed manual transmission with more carbon fiber weave going around it. When I first saw this backseat, I was like, wow, that's crazy because I remember sitting in a backseat just like this in my dad's B7 A4. And what's crazy is how big cars have gotten. This is an A4 backseat. And this honestly looks like it's the same size as my dad's A3 backseat today. It's crazy how big cars have gotten. But as you can see, RS4 still and branded back in the seats, bolstered seats. And well, these seats look very comfortable back here and the headrest also moves up to which is also very nice and heated rear seats which i also find very interesting they go up to six levels that's crazy also another neat touch i also really like is the what i like to call what are sun shades but i like i like to call peasant blockers which i mean they're pretty cool um obviously just jokes but i think these are really cool nice touch that Audi put these in the back seat there are two things I want to highlight on this car with cool features, I guess. First of all, is the owner's manual placement. If you're in this car, you're probably expecting the owner's manuals in the glove box, which I thought it was too. And when I opened the glove box to clean it today, I noticed that there's no owner's manual in here. So I figured that the owner of this car must have lost it, or, you know, maybe that some of the previous owners of this car must have lost it, because let's be honest, it's a 2007 Audi, you know, somewhere between the ownerships of past owners, you know, the owner's manual may have gotten misplaced or whatever. Well, it turns out that when I was cleaning this car, I actually found the owner's manual, and it's in this strange, unorthodox place, but now I think about it, it's quite genius. Audi engineered the owner's manual placement for a compartment for it right under the steering wheel. This is the owner's manual right here, and it's a little tiny compartment made for the owner's manual, which is so cool. And honestly, now I think about it, this is genius because let's say you're broken down the side of the road and you need to get the owner's manual and you're on the side of a highway and you don't you don't have to reach over to the glove box and grab it and fiddle with all your stuff. It's always right in front of you all the time. Car manufacturers, please take note on this because that is genius. I swear, like, I'm not trying to be sarcastic or anything, but that is genius. It's such a hidden compartment where it's not out in the open anywhere. It's under the steering wheel, and only the owners really know where the owner's manual is. It literally is what it is. It's an owner's manual. Second thing is this center stack, which I find to be hardly dated, but honestly quite aged really well. I love the way this center stack is. It's so beautiful in a way because everything is just integrated into the dashboard. It's like an airplane cockpit. Like the buttons make these awesome noises and the all these buttons make cool noises. The knobs feel great. The of all the buttons feel amazing and I really love the way this center stack looks in general. We got, let me show you this screen. So we put the, in the key in here and I'm just gonna put it in the ignition. And this, when I first turn this on, this is the old Audi chime. Brings me back to the days of my dad's B7 A4 of hearing this sort of Volkswagen Audi like chime It's pretty cool overall this screen was pretty advanced for its time. I do apologize about the I wonder if it's because the doors open Nope, well Hopefully I do apologize about the beeping But anyways, you have this really really cool screen set up here, which is pretty advanced for its time and Everything's a button and everything looks super super cool and the animations are pretty nice. The navigation, we have setup and CD name, AM, FM for radio. Pretty, pretty neat screen setup here. And then these buttons here control the tuning and the sound and everything. So cool screen setup, pretty advanced for the time to be honest. Another thing I want to touch upon before I end this video is the difference between a US spec RS4 and then a UK spec RS4, so a European spec RS4, and then a US spec RS4, because there are some major differences between these cars, because I know I have some European viewers that may find this interesting. For example, in Europe, for the taillights here, these lights under here would be yellow instead of red. Here in the United States, they have to be red for US regulations or something like that. 
Additionally, of course, there's the yellow reflector in the front that we have to have. But what I find most interesting is the interior where in the Uni in United Kingdom or Europeans, they got the Lamborghini Gallardo steering wheel that they got from this car. Yes, that was an option. You can get a Lamborghini Gallardo steering wheel, which I'll put up a picture. It's an actual like Lamborghini steering wheel with an Audi logo on it. And then the seats, which they got, they think they're Lamborghini seats too. Um, and that, we did not get that option here, unfortunately. We only got these comfort seats, which they're still good looking seats. But like, I mean, I do not know why we did not get those options here. Or maybe they just didn't offer it here. But I suspect US regulations had to have this certain steering wheel because maybe the airbag had to be a certain size or something and the seats maybe had to have airbags in them i'm not sure but yeah you can get lamborghini seats and a lamborghini steering wheel out of a gallardo in the european spec rs4 so now it's time to end off this video with the question why was this car ditched for the u.s market and why will this car never come back for the u.s market well i will start off with why this car was ditched now Audi never specifically said why this car was ditched. However, I do have a few uh, specific, a uh, few reasons why I believe it was ditched. My first and probably the reason why Audi ditched it was that here in the United States, like German cars in general, are super strange of what we get for the US market today. We love SUVs, which is why we don't get wagons in the United States. But for back in 2008, I suspect this car just didn't sell well. I mean, this car back then was a $70,000 sedan. And back in 2008, I know there was a great recession in the United States. and. There, I'm sure there were not a lot of people that could afford a $70,000 Audi back way back when. Today, these have gone to be really good deals. You could find good ones for around 20 to 30K, nice ones for around 40 to 50K, and this one is definitely a nice one. I mean, if the, the not so nice ones have like almost 200,000 miles on them. But I also suspect because since when Audi introduced the RS5 with the bigger same engine, the 4.2 liter V8, that car was lighter, it was faster, and yes, it was less practical, but I think people wanted a sports car. No one really wanted a sports sedan, they wanted a sports car, and that was what the RS5 was back in the time. It was a sports car rather than a sports sedan. Now today, Audi still makes the RS4 and they make it in a Avant or a wagon over in the Europe country. So UK, Germany, Spain, etc. They all get the RS4 Avant. Unfortunately, they don't make an RS4 sedan anymore. I'm, I'm not too sure why, but I think that's also why we aren't getting it anymore is because Audi moved from a sedan and Avant to ditching the sedan and just making an Avant. Additionally as well, it doesn't have a V8 anymore. It has a V6. That is sort of a, a characteristic with Audi's models, kind of like the S5 where the S5 also moved from a V8 to a V6. Finally, also, here in the United States, we get the Audi RS6 Avant. So I feel like that that's why Audi wouldn't bring it here either because, I mean, why would you go out and buy an RS4 when you can go out and buy an RS6 Avant that's better, faster, bigger engine, etc. However, me personally, I would buy an RS4 Avant. I think the RS4 is the perfect size, perfect value for money. I think the RS6, while it is a great car, uh, it's a little too much uh, for some people. And so that was the Audi RS4. This car was awesome to film with. So thank you to my neighbor again uh, and uh, for letting me clean it and review it. And uh, this car, while we don't get any more, what I like to say is that don't be cr cry because the, we're not gonna get the RS4. Smile because we actually did get over 10,000 of these RS4s here in the United States. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.